Hey, it's Ty with Hardy House Games, teaching how to win so everyone can hate you. Today we're going to talk about Splendor. It's an engineering-ish building type game, good for two to four players. Personally, I like to play with two players with the wifey, but of course you can play with more. There are different strategies that go with two versus four players and they kind of reverse their types of strategies. But first I just want to go over the main strategy overall, like this is a good way to win. So the first thing you want to do is look at those nobles. Look at which ones rely on a lot of these smaller type tier cards, what resources they take and how they align with the nobles. That way you can snatch a noble early on in the game. A great strategy, which works for anybody, is just get a lot of these tier one cards so that way you can start getting these resources added up. They're very important. And if you can get a victory point towards the beginning, these points are adding up and it's really important that we go for that. Another great thing to do at the beginning is to reserve some cards that look very valuable as like one of those first type of cards to grab. So for example, like I grabbed up this card where it has a victory point and it's a tier one card so it doesn't cost a whole lot. Reserving this is great because you, you, of course you get your gold and you get to keep it and play it later and other people can't have it. Of course it's pretty self-explanatory to watch what other players are doing. That's kind of how you have to play with any game but definitely watch what gems that your players are taking and see what cards that they're saving up for and take that, reserve it, get another gold, start racking up these golds. So that way you can use these to either get a noble to come visit you or simply to just get another card in the tier 2 which of course gets you points. Usually the tier 2 cards have victory points related to them. Try not to just take gems just to take them. Of course, that's kind of, you know, silly to think, well, why would you just take gems, you know? A lot of people will take just a lot of assortment of what they see here simply because, oh, you know, I might use it later for a card, I, I don't know. Don't think like that. You want to make sure that every gem you take has a purpose. Look down here, you're like, okay, if I take, you know, the blue gem, there's a couple cards that that could work towards in case somebody else takes one of those cards. That being said, you want to make sure that you are flexible flexible to changing strategies. Don't be married to a certain card. You're like, that one's worth five virtue points. I have to get it. I'm going to reserve it. I'm going to buy it. Don't think like that because a lot of times those tier three cards may not ever be purchased by you or by the winner. A lot of times you can stick with the tier two type virtue points, which are worth two each. Usually I think there might be a three worth in there, but those might not seem like a lot, but they add up. I mean, an entire nobles worth three. The highest point I've seen, what, seven? I don't know why I said seven, it's five of course, but it costs seven gems in there. Those fives might be worth a lot to you or they seem like a lot. That's a whole third of the entire breakthrough points you have to get. But when you think about it, it takes a long time to get there. If you can just get a good assortment of these small tier one cards and have a lot of gems stacked up, you can just constantly buy those tier two gems, which have victory points associated with them. They add up real quick and they can get you that, that fast victory. So basically the two main strategies that we see is the player that gets a lot of tier one cards, gets a lot of gems from these, you know, reserve stuff, gets a lot of gold and just does these bottom tiers and second tier type cards. That's a, I think a great strategy. The other type of strategy a lot of people use Use is they specifically go for a high tier card or a couple of these they reserve them early on in the game maybe the third second you know turn that they do they grab it and they hold on to the whole game and then of course at the end that's when they're they're playing it and hopefully they're getting a noble or two now in a two-player game it's a little different there's a lot more resources available for just the two players so the whole hoarding gems strategy doesn't really work for that to win for a two-player I would say go with the strategy of tier one tier two stacking up a lot of points over and over and not worrying a whole lot about tier three unless you know an opportunity arises of course go for it it's not necessary to get most of the nobles in a two-player game. You want at least one, of course, but I've played games where I've had two nobles, my wife had one, and she still beat me. So in all reality, I should be asking her for strategies. The point is, you don't need to focus so much on nobles that you forget that these cards down here in tier two are so powerful. I learned that the hard way from the boss, really. Now in a four-player game, it's kind of switching roles. The nobles are a lot more powerful in these games, and the higher tier cards cards are almost unattainable because the resources are limited, people start hoarding gems and it actually matters and you want to keep a good balance of these low tier cards so that way you get those nobles, get a lot of tier twos and it's almost like a sneak attack win with a four player game because people see you not getting the big cards, they see you just kind of getting points here and there but you're a real threat because you got most of the nobles to visit you plus those small tier cards get you up there 
Eu quero quanto? 